Welcome back everyone to the Blazor Hybrid Beginner Series. I'm your host, James Montemagno, along on this journey, and I am a program manager here on the developer community team at Microsoft. Now, this journey has been pretty awesome so far. We not only learned all about what Blazor Hybrid is, how it works with WinForms, WPF, and .NET MAUI, which we're using today to build out iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows applications, We've seen how to build out UIs using Razor components, and additionally, blend in native APIs of the platforms to check connectivity, and even add in native controls, such as .NET MAUI tapped pages and native buttons to blend our web and our native together in this hybrid world. Now, the next step here is that we are now currently building a mobile and desktop app. What if we want to share some of that code with our website. Now, you might already have an existing Blazor website, so you're saying, well, how do I take that code and then share it with our Blazor hybrid app? Well, we can easily do that using Razor class libraries and take our existing code and pull it into there. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so right now we have our to-do application. If I run it we, here on Windows or Android or iOS or Mac, we'll see that we're right now blending together some native and some um, hybrid web content. So here we have our counters, we have our to-do, we have our to-do page that we've been building out. We can add things here. The next thing we want to do is create a to-do website. There we go. Let's add it and hit save. Perfect. Now here we have a bunch of pages, but we also have a native page as well. So we're kind of blending those worlds. And here this is the tabbed page. And each of those pages is a Blazor web view that's referencing a Razor page over here. So if I take a look at the Razor components, so we have a counter Razor, our fetch data, our index, and our to-do. So ideally what we'd want to do is say we want to not only create shareable components, but we might even want to take this a step further and bring this entire page into another web application. So this is great because if you have a Blazor website, you can start sharing that content with a Blazor Hybrid app. So let's take a look. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the Solution Explorer, and I am going to add a new project into our solution. And I specifically am going to look for a Razor class library. There it is. This will enable you to not only put C Sharp code inside of here, but also Razor components. Let's call this hybrid to do app dot components. Perfect. Now here I'm going to target .NET 8 because we have a .NET 8 page there. And we can also select to support pages and views if we wanted to. We're just going to leave the default for now. All right. So if we look at what is inside of this hybrid to-do app component, we can see there's a dub dub route with a background and also a JavaScript file. So you can add those files in here. We get an imports file. So that's bringing in the using and a simple component that says that this is defined inside of the specific library and assembly. We also get an example of JavaScript interrupts. So you can also do that too. So you can have it calling back and forth from C Sharp and JavaScript. So if we wanted to easily take this one component and bring it into our existing application, we can do that. So the first thing we would need to do is go into our hybrid to-do app, and I can say add project reference, and then find it here. Additionally, what you're able to do is simply drag and drop that library onto the dependencies, and that will automatically add it here. So we can see under our projects that it is going to be added automatically right here into our hybrid to-do.components. So dragging and dropping it into dependencies automatically adds it there for us, which is pretty awesome. We can double click on the CS proj, and this is our CS proj for our main application. And of course, you can add those references manually if you desire. So here it is. We're just including that CS proj into here. Nice. All right. So now that we have access to that component library, we can go back into our index page, for example, and we could go ahead and say, let me grab my hybrid to do app components, component one. Amazing. And now if I go ahead and run the application again, what we're going to see is that the component one will be displayed inside of our index.razor in the application. Now, this isn't going to be 
the beautiful control that I want to use, but you get the point that this is now coming from a shared library and it's no longer embedded in that one application. So if I had another Blazor hybrid app or I had a Blazor website, then I'd be able to share this specific component in there. Now let's take this to do page that we've been building out and actually put that into that library. So let's go ahead and simply take the data and the files we need and drag it into this components. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say add new folder and I'm just going to say pages. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another folder called data just to keep them separate. And the first thing I'm going to do is take both of my to do item and my to do service and pull them into my data. Now here we're just going to leave the namespaces the same, but you might want to update the namespaces here in your application there. Now when I drag and drop that in, it's going to leave them in the old application. So we're going to go ahead and delete them out of there. There we go. Perfect. Now beyond that, I could take that entire to do.razor and drag that into my pages as well. Perfect. And now we're going to delete that out of here. Perfect. All right. Since we can look at our to do application, we can see that we have our to do page and we can now see that I connectivity doesn't exist. And we remember I connectivity is coming from .NET MAUI. So we have two options here. We can create our own I connectivity and implement it on the platform here, or we can bring in the MAUI essentials library, which will just give us the stubs, which are the interfaces. I could then optionally implement that on the Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor server if I needed to, or we can leave it blank. So I'm going to open up the project here. And under pro property group, under my implicit usings, I'm going to say use Maui essentials and set that to true. Now, when I do that, this is going to bring in all of the common code. So none of the implementations, because this is just a component library, but under our dependencies, this will bring in this specific NuGet package, Microsoft Maui essentials. And again, this is just going to be the stubs. So when I go back into my to do.razor, we can now see here that if I click on the little light bulb, it'll say bring in the using Microsoft Maui networking libraries. Inside of the Maui application, it was using implicit using, since it's a Maui app, it knew about it. Now we have access to that API. So that's pretty cool. If I go back into my Maui application, we can note that nothing has changed over here. We still have, for example, our connectivity right there and the current. That's pretty awesome. Now, one other thing has changed, though. We have literally moved the Razor page from our hybrid to do Maui application into a component. So if we go into our main page and we take a look at where we're referencing that specific to do, we're telling it that's in a specific namespace inside of our main library. So we're going to want to create an XML namespace and say pages shared. And now I'm going to say pages, and we're going to see that there are two specific namespaces that come up. We have the pages and the components.pages. Since specifically how the razor files work is inside the folder directory, it has created a new namespace for us since we didn't specify it ourselves. So that's what we're going to use. And we can see that it not only brings in the namespace of components.pages, but it also says it's in this specific assembly to look for. That's really helpful. Now, if I go back down here, I can now say pages shared. And this is going to show me to do. So we've changed where the .NET MAUI Blazor hybrid web view is looking for that to do page. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and launch this again. And what we should see is the exact same application. We've instead moved down the entire to do service and specifically the page. So here it is. Here is our to do's with all the same data because it's pulling everything as we would expect. So our system.io works the same, our page works the same, everything is the same. Awesome. And in fact, we can say create a razor class library, add that to do, check it off, and hit save. That's pretty cool, right? So we're just now taking all that code and moving it in the class library. OK, so now we need to go ahead and add our Blazor web app. So all we need to do is come into our Solution Explorer. I'm going to right click on the solution 
I'm going to add a new project. Now, under Blazor, you may have some older templates and some newer templates based if you have older versions of .NET installed, which I do. The one that we'll want to pick is the new .NET 8 Blazor web app. And this might be the only template that you have, so that's the one that we want to pick. This is the one that is going to enable both server-side rendering and client-side rendering and activity. So here, we're just going to call this the hybrid to do app dot website. On next, we're going to go ahead and make sure .NET 8 is selected, enable HTTPS, and make sure that the use interactive server components is selected. And for now, we're going to go ahead and include the sample pages because this is going to give us different patterns and give us the same weather and data pages that we have that are on the Blazor hybrid app built with .NET MAUI. So I'm just going to hit Create. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and minimize down the other projects. There we go. And here we go. If I go and say so that as a startup, we can note that we have still a dub dub root with Bootstrap and our CSS. We also have components here. And the components are our layouts, which should look familiar, and our pages of the counter, home, and the weather. The main difference is that there's these attributes for the Blazor web app, such as render mode server, to actually do the interactive bits since this blends together server and client side rendering together in .NET 8. All right, so if I go ahead and run this, this will spin up our website and launch our browser with our fully 100% Blazor web app. All right, here we go. It's getting spun up and launches. Here we go. We have our hello world. If I go ahead and expand this, we have our counter and we have our weather. Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and add some of the components from the Razor class library that we created. So what I need to do is take that components and drag that into the dependencies. You can also, of course, right click and add a project reference. And now from there, if I go into my home, for example, I can now go in and say hybrid component one, hybrid to do app dot components slash component one. And just like that, we'll now be sharing that simple component if we go ahead and open it again between our Blazor hybrid app and our Blazor web app. So I'm going to go ahead and run this one more time. And this will bring together the two worlds to share simple components. So here it is. There it is. The components defined in hybrid to do app dot components library. All right. Well, what about adding that full to do page? Well, let's go ahead and open it up. Well, here we have, of course, the Microsoft MAUI networking. We have the data that's coming in here, and that is inside of our component. So we want to go ahead and reference that into our website. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add another page. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our main menu that we saw earlier. And what we're going to do is add another item here. So we're going to go ahead and say div, add that in here. And we're going to make the href to do. So similar to what we did in the Blazor hybrid app earlier before we were using native tabs, we're just going to add another section. I'm going to say to do's. Now, since this is inside of the main Blazor router, we're going to want to make sure that the Blazor router knows about our additional assemblies. So back in the solution explorer, I'm going to go ahead into our routes.razor. Now, what this does is the router is looking specifically for the main assembly of our app. We're going to need to give it additional context. So here I'm going to say additional assemblies. We're going to give it a new array. And here I can say type of to do, because it's going to be the to do page dot assembly. Now it doesn't know about to do, so we're going to have it bring in a using for us there. There we go. And of course, close that out, that little squiggle. There we go. So this is going to tell the router to scan the additional assemblies. Now, in .NET 8, we're also going to have to go into our program.cs file. And this is where we're adding our Razor components and our builder and our server components. It's where we're adding HTTPS redirects and static files and also adding and mapping our Razor components. Here, we're also going to need to do add additional assemblies and add very similar code. So we're going to say type of to do. There we go, dot assembly, and pass that in as well. Awesome. Now, when we run this, we're still going to have a few more additional issues that we're going to need to clean up. So I want to show you that. When you run it, you're going to see that we weren't able to find the Microsoft MAUI Essentials. Now, you may not be using MAUI Essentials. And as I mentioned earlier, 
we just added that little CSProj flag, you may want to just create your own iConnectivity interface and implement that so you don't have to use the Maui Essentials NuGet package. But we can do that for this demo's sake. And I will link to another video where Alon and I from .NET Conf 2022 showed how to create your own interface and check different uh, browser connectivity endpoints for reference. But let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into my website here, double click on it. And I'm also going to say use Maui Essentials. And I'm going to say true. Now remember that this isn't actually going to add any implementation because it doesn't know anything about iOS, Android, Mac, or Windows. This is the browser. The only thing that this is going to do is add in a reference assembly with the interfaces for us to implement. So we can do that. So we can go into our program CS. And at the bottom, I'm just going to create a new class here called Blazor Connectivity. And I'm going to implement iConnectivity there. And there we go. It's found in Microsoft and Maui Networking. I'm just going to right click, go to my quick actions, and implement that interface. Perfect. Now here, this is a storing exceptions, but we're just going to go for now. We're just going to return null for the connection profiles. And for just the demo sake, I'm going to go ahead and say return network access of internet, just so we know we have internet here. Now this is rendering Blazor server, so it's going to have internet connectivity. If I was doing the web part in the client interaction, I could invoke a little bit of JavaScript to check those APIs too. And I'll link to documentation below and a source code sample of how to do that. But now that we have this set up, all we need to do is register our additional services just like we were registering them with the .NET MAUI app. So I'm going to go into my builder, and I'm going to say services dot, and I'm going to add a singleton. And the first one we're going to add is our to-do service. There we go. And then I'm going to add my iConnectivity. So builder dot services dot add singleton. And I'm going to add I connectivity and the Blazor connectivity. There we go. Just like that. Perfect. Now, the very last thing that I need to do is add an attribute into my todo.razor specifically for the Blazor web app to tell it to render in server mode. If we take a look at our counter page, we can see that this attribute is render mode server. For the weather or the data page, this is streaming rendering. And I'll link to documentation so you can learn more about these new features in .NET 8 for Blazor. So all we're going to do is go in to our to-do, and I'm going to add this attribute. There we go. Now when I launch the website, we're now going to see that to-do's entry, and we'll be able to navigate to it fully, and we'll be able to add our to-do list automatically. So here it is. It's up and running. We have our to-dos. There it is, no to-dos. And I'll say create Blazor site, add to-do. We can add a breakpoint here so we can see our new to-do is getting hit with that interactivity. And now we have it. We can go ahead and click on that, save it. We can go back and forth, and everything is working as we would expect. All right, there we go. We've done it. We have now created both a Blazor hybrid application with .NET MAUI, and we've created our Blazor web app, and we're sharing components and full pages, business logic, and so much more between our applications and our web applications. It's just that easy to get started building and sharing code between your desktop, mobile apps, and your web apps powered by Blazor, Blazor Hybrid, and .NET MAUI, all with C Sharp and .NET. All right. We've gotten this far into our series, and in the final video, I'm going to give you some great resources and wrap up to show you exactly where you need to go to learn more on your learning journey with Blazor, Blazor Hybrid, and .NET MAUI. So stay tuned for more Blazor Hybrid beginner series.